Okay, hey guys. Today we are going to be looking at the uh, action bar UI element. Before that though, a couple housekeeping things. Uh, hopefully you will notice the audio quality is significantly better from the previous videos as well as the video quality. Uh, my apologies that the first two turned out a little blurry when I uploaded them for some reason and the audio was just meh. Um, but there should be quite a bit improvement here and it should remain to be good quality for all future videos. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to say, housekeeping-wise, and that is I'm going to change the format of these videos a little bit because the other ones were just so long, and I feel like a lot of people don't want to sit down and watch 45-minute long videos of, of me kind of rambling along. So I'm still going to be doing some referencing of the uh, API and stuff. I'm not going to change that, but I'm going to have a little more structure to my videos here. I have a little notes open on my uh, other screen that I can see. I'm going to try and follow those and split these up into shorter videos so that people can follow along a little easier and not spend, you know, hours of time watching videos of me fumbling around with APIs and stuff. Um, if you're just joining us, you can st start it by clicking Get the SDK and downloading all the uh, Android development tools. We're going to be following this training guide over here. In the first video, we did building your first app, and we talked about starting another activity. In this one, we're going to start with an action bar. Um, just a couple things to note about it. The first being that it actually is included in a default project. Let me close out of all this. I was playing with some stuff previously here. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new project. Android application project. And let's just name it Action... Ooh, I can't spell. Action Bar. Okay, there we go. I'm going to leave these all the default. Um, after doing quite a bit of reading, I like API version 8 because it supports a much larger uh, populace of people who own Android devices, and of course targeting the newest one makes sense. I'm going to pick Holo Light, just because I tend to like that better than the dark, uh, dark UI bar. But this is just entirely up to you. If you want your application to have a very dark, sleek look, you pick dark, or if you want it to be a little more light, uh, easy on the eyes, you could pick Holo Light. I would not recommend picking none, because you will not get the action bar. Um, there's ways to add it manually, and well, you can read on that on your own, but I'm not really going to be covering that. Let's click right here, setting up the action bar. Primarily, if you want to add it manually, you have a couple different options. It depends on whether you, uh, what version of Android you want to support. If you're targeting just 3.0 and above, you have a specific set of requirements to make sure. You have to make sure and order, and you'll get the action bar. If you're supporting 2.1 and above, it's a different set of requirements. But there's no magic there, it's just making sure you have a couple lines included in your manifest file and so forth and have it the appropriate style set and you'll pretty much just get the action bar but like I said you get it by default if you use just a, uh, one of the themes they've given you so that's what I'm going to be doing here uh, adding actions buttons we'll get into in a minute so I'm going to pick holo light and I'm going to keep all this the same and I'm going to keep all this the same and I'm going to leave blank activity the same and I'm going to even leave the name of it the same uh, no navigation type for now. We'll click finish. Wait for it to do its thing. Okay, now there's something I want to point out that actually confused me for the longest time here when I first started playing with this. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, a bug in this Android development environment, part of their plugins or something, but I'm going to show you how I choose to fix it. So basically what happens is every time you make a new project, it imports an underscore and then a numerical representation of the next iteration of this app compat library. And this is what allows you to use Action Bar and other newer UI elements on older devices. But the problem is, is that I don't want multiple of these app compatibility libraries because I don't really need them. So I'm just going to right-click here and go Delete. Check that to physically delete the folder and hit OK. You have to click Continue because it's going to warn you that that library is in use. Now after doing that, you're going to get an error because it's, it's saying it doesn't know how to find the support V7. And the reason it doesn't know how to find it is if you right-click on this and go to Properties, and you click on Android, it's referencing this v2 underscore 2, and we just deleted that folder. So what you actually have to do is click Remove, click Add, and select this one which references the one that's already included. Hit OK, Apply, OK, and now all these errors will go away. So, again, I don't know if that's just a bug in their environment here, but the way I choose to fix it is by deleting every new one it adds and just editing the uh, properties of this to reference the folder that already exists for the support library. And so, on that note, I am using the support library, which is the default, which allows you to support uh, Android devices, I think, 2.2 and above. Um, 
So that pretty much wraps up that. And I'm going to get into adding actual actions. And all these are defined in an XML file that's inside your resources menu. So if you open up action bar here and go into resources menu, there's one file right now and that's where all your items are at. Now you'll see ours actually has one item in it by default and it's a setting. Uh, the ID is action underscore settings, the order and category is 100, we'll talk about that in a second. The title is just referencing a string resource and that string is just the word settings. Uh, and show is action never. Now this is an important note here, if you come over here you'll see there's if room and never. And so what the if room does is, let me pull up, um, well actually let's just deploy this and I'll, I haven't added anything yet. Okay, on second thought I'll come back to that show as action in a second. But right now this is never, so we're just not going to worry about playing with that one. But you'll see right here that if you want to add another one, basically just have to declare an item. So let's come in here and let's just copy this and paste it. Now one important thing to note is, and again this kind of plagued me when I first started, I had to do a little bit of Google searching to figure this out, is you'll notice these three are all Android, this one says app. So what this app is actually doing is referencing this custom namespace up here, this XML and S app. So if you change this to app2 or something, you have to change all these to app2. And this is just a part of Android that you have to do if you want to support, again, older versions. And it does that for you by default, just make sure that if you want to use the show as action property, you have to use the word app there. If you put Android, it will not work, assuming you're using the support library. Now let's go add a string resource, uh, strings, and you'll see we have this action settings right there. Let's add one for, uh, uh, what do we want to call it? Let's just call it search, because that's their example as well. So we'll call it search, and we'll call it action underscore search. Come back in here and let's change this ID to search. And the order and category will leave 100 for now. We'll change this string reference to the search one we just created. And I actually want to set this to if room, which there's going to be a room because I only have one icon on there. Um, so I'll deploy this and I'll come back and talk about the show as action and order and category. So let's deploy this. Let's go over here into a Java file and hit run as and uh, Android application. It's probably going to ask me which device. Oh, no, I think I just remembered. Let's come over here. Should put the... Uh, should just install right on my device. Oh, no, if I have to pick it. Okay, I want to use my Samsung. Same device. Okay. Now I don't know where to launch it to. Um, sure. Not really sure what that warning was. I must have already had it installed on my device or something. Oh, you know what? I think I did because I was testing a little bit earlier. Okay, so this is the uh, default application that's opened up here. There's not a whole lot going on, just the word hello world. Uh, you have the default icon and the title of our application. Just notice those, we have the search term right here. And if I just press on that, you'll see we get a nice little uh, pressed effect. And if you let go, it goes away. Um, you see it's a string representation. Okay, uh, you can put an icon in there and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Now the other thing to note is, if you come back over here, the settings is set to never. So the question is, where does this never go to? And the answer is, it actually goes to your overflow. And from what I've done research, there's a very big difference as to what device you're using. If your device has a physical menu button like mine, you'll see that when I press the menu button, I get a little uh, uh, list across the bottom of the screen with all those hidden items in it that I can, again, press, interact with, and that have touch effects and all that, and when I press it, it goes away. Um, but a lot of the newer Nexus devices actually have a little dot, dot, dot in the corner, like you'll see right here, and anything that doesn't fit overflows into there, because those newer devices don't actually have a physical menu button, they just have a back button, home button, and a recent apps button. So all that matters from the development perspective is, if you put it as never, it'll show up in this kind of overflow. Uh, so you actually see if I set this to if room and redeploy it, save this, redeploy it, and come back over here, we'll see uh, search and settings both in the top bar now. As it launches again. So there you go. You see search and settings both in the top bar there. Now one other thing we can do is we can play with the order. You'll see right now, come back here, search is first and settings is second. And that's because they both have the same uh, order and category. It's kind of like a weight almost, like priorities to which one goes first. And they both have the same priority, which means it's just going to go from top to bottom. But you'll see that if I set this search to 200, it'll actually put search behind settings. 
So let's deploy this. You'll see right now it's search and then settings. I've just deployed it with the weights flipped and now we should see settings and then search. Yep. So by changing this number you can change, sorry, by changing this number you can change which ones appear in what order or if you just get rid of it all together it'll just appear from top to bottom of the uh, file. Um, okay, so we've covered order and category and we've covered show as action. Uh, titles, of course, just the uh, what you see there. And ID is just used in the code if you want to reference the item. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, later, probably in the next video where we actually deal with responding to these button clicks. That's going to be in the next video. The last thing I want to cover is actually adding an icon. So let's come over here, and if you click right here, they have a recommended iconography, which is basically a, a predefined set of icons you should use that match their theme. So we're going to click here and download their icon pack and we're going to open it whenever it finishes come right here it's actually opened up in a uh, new tab over here or uh, sorry another screen so I'll bring it on over and we'll see they have action bar icons is what we're looking for they also have ones for different things but we want action bar icons we're using the holo light theme and basically this is just do you want a black icon or a white icon to get the proper contrast there we have as you can see a black bar so we're going to need to use the uh, holo dark theme so that we can get the appropriate contrast by having white icons um, and we want to add one for just uh, search let's just add one for search and we'll put settings back in the overflow so you'll see here they actually provided you with the file in multiple sizes to support different screen densities which is wonderful because that saves the time of making the image yourself and uh, we're having to resize it and do all that other stuff. So let's just come in here. Let's come to workspace, action bar, resources, drawable, and we're just going to drag pretty much back and forth. Just go like this. And we'll just do HDPI. We'll drag in search. We'll go up a level. MDPI. Now there is no LDPI, and I believe the reason for that is that it actually scales down one of the higher resolution ones. I think it's HDPI, it's, it can just cuts the resolution in half and knows to put that inside of uh, LDPI. So you'll actually see if you come over here and look, there's actually no resources at all in LDPI for the default project, even the icon, because it knows how to scale down the, I think it's the HDPI one. So for our future tutorials, we're never really going to be putting, putting anything inside of LDPI. Um, so now we've added those in this folder, the only thing we have left to do is to add an icon. So let's come over here and look and see how they did that. Let's back up a level and we'll see they've added this Android colon icon. So let's copy this and come over here and we'll paste one for search. Let's also set the settings back to never just so it's not showing up. Um, set that back to 100 just for default and at drawable and then this file or this uh, part after this slash just has to match the file name which of course it does uh, and so we should just be able to deploy this and we should get an icon in there. Let's come over here. Settings should be gone because I put it to never and we should see an actual search icon. Yep, there's our search icon. So you'll see when I press it we get a overlay and actually what it does is it takes that string resource we gave it and makes kind of a tool tip out of it. So you saw there for a second when you press and hold it you get the uh, string representation in a nice little tool tip there. So I definitely recommend it even if using icons to still put this uh, title resource there, sorry not string, title property there is it is, could be useful to users. Um, so that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. We've talked a little bit about how you add it and the fact that it's included by default in your project. Uh, we went over adding buttons inside this XML file and how to add icons and what some of the default properties do. In the next video we're going to talk about how to respond to when the user presses them. We're going to talk about something called a toast which is a, an Android element that can be used kind of for uh, different things, notifying the user of things. I like to use it for debugging a lot. It can be quickly and easily created and it's a fast easy way to print string out to the screen. So basically what I'm doing in the next tutorial is when the user presses the search button creating a toast object that says search. And that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. Um, definitely please let me know if you guys are liking these videos, if you like this new format. Uh, I, I definitely hope you guys appreciate the uh, higher video and audio quality. Um, I know I appreciate it, um, but uh, definitely know, let me know what you think about this new format where we kind of shorten it up a little bit and split up it up into uh, multiple videos. And again, please uh, subscribe, 
like the video, uh, share with all your friends, do all that kind of good stuff, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.